Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday, July 2nd, and our readings today are taken from the book of Amos and the Gospel of Matthew. And through them, we learn that God calls each of us in ways that we might not expect, and that Christ himself is the model for all who provide care to others. Let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the God of all consolation, who has shown us his great mercy. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel. The country cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying. But never again prophecy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the following the flock and said to me, Go prophecy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say, Prophecy not against Israel, preach not against the house of Isaac. Now, thus says the Lord, your wife shall be made a harlot in the city, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by the measuring line, and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial psalm is, The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of the purest gold, sweeter also than syrup and honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man 
has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is that the paralytic was cured because of the faith of the caregivers. It was through their intercession that this person was brought to Jesus, both literally and figuratively. And because of their actions, a miracle was performed that allowed even more people to see the love of God and to follow Christ. May we always remember the caregivers that we encounter, those who have enriched our lives by their faith in God and their faith in us. Let us now bring our cares and concerns to our Heavenly Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our call to stewardship, that we may use our gifts to benefit those who need our help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire all the scientists and medical researchers working for a cure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in any way burdened in these difficult times, that the sick, the unemployed, the lonely, and the frontline and essential workers may find peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who need physical or spiritual healing, that God's gracious spirit will give their bodies and minds comfort and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, that they may be brought into the eternal peace of God's presence through Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, help us to begin this day joyfully in your name and spend it in loving service to you and all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Go in peace.